Hello, hello. Sorry if I'm coughing. Let's see, what do we got? If anybody's out there, give me a shout out in the chat. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, let's see, you got Facebook, check. Hey, there we go. Now we got chats popping up. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm sorry for the delay. It's uh, kind of a busy day. A lot of stuff going on. So first thing I gotta do is turn off my Twitch audio. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, the sound of your own voice, right? No matter how much I do it, I still hate it. <laughs> uh, hi from Panama. Wow, thanks for tuning in, Gustavo. Um, today, okay, so I'm assuming all of you guys in the chat right now, looks like we got about, oh god, it's hard to keep track, we got Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, probably, um, between all three, I've got the chat box up for at least Twitch and YouTube, Facebook I couldn't link up, so, any of you that are watching on YouTube, I will, uh, let me see if I can find our channel really quick, so if you are new to this stream, um, I am one of the Pixelogic team members um, helping to develop ZBrush and do all this stuff in ZBrush Live as well as the podcast and I wanted to do, this is a new stream, I've kind of been doing various streams, all kinds of different things. Um, this one in particular is a series that I wanted to do to work alongside with you guys, all of you out there and I was trying to find a way to collaborate more with the community and get all of you involved and make it a little bit easier if you guys have questions. Um, a lot of us at Pixelogic we try to you know give as much information as we can and, and I know it's difficult to watch tutorials and get a grasp on things so this is kind of just me sort of free-flowing and this is a, a sort of an episodic kind of show um, I'm kind of experimenting with it but what I want to call this is ZBrush mashups so essentially the con the concept of this is take two random things and mash them up together but instead of me picking I want this to be for you guys so to start it all off I had to pick one the choice from um, I kind of went around the office and asked, asked everybody what they thought and the mashup of Blade Runner and Super Mario came up so that's what I started off with and I started working on uh, I'm working on a Luigi and so as of right now the goal is that you know I want to take all of your suggestions you guys throw out random topics whether it's movies video games anything you can think of um, and sort of pull this together and make a sort of virtual uh, sort of wheel of fortune wheel so I'll spin the wheel um, the next the next character mashup that I do that's when I want to start working on it with you guys so the the sort of I, I think I have let me see if I can give you some visual aid here it's a uh, uh, let's see ZBrush live let's see wheel of fortune Hopefully I don't get in trouble for this. Let's just go to YouTube. Let's get no audio. Yeah, so the goal is I'm going to take all of your suggestions. I'm going to make a randomized script so I can generate something that's going to give me uh, an accurate, realistic depiction of something pick, chosen from you guys. So I'm going to throw all your suggestions in. And I actually got a lot of great suggestions last time. I can throw those out for you guys. Let me pull these up really quick before I get started. Uh, there were some pretty gnarly ones. I will, I was, I was very excited. They mash up ideas. So last, last stream that was the first stream that I'd done this. So as I'm going along, if you guys have ideas, if you have them now, go ahead and throw them out. Um, some that were thrown out before, uh, Space Marine. So you can just throw out individuals or a combination of two, whatever. Um, I'd like to be able to take them and just throw them in the wheel and let that be the deciding factor, unless one of them just jumps out like. Space Marine and Care Bear, which I would absolutely love to do, but so those are an option. White Power Ranger and Sub Zero was one. Xenomorph and Pokemon. 
uh, you know, it goes on and on. Digimon and Voltron, so many cool ideas. And so the goal is the next, I believe this stream, I should be sort of wrapping up a few of the primary stuff and just go, I'm kind of going through the process naturally. I, I really haven't spent that much time, you know, preparing a concept exactly what I want to do. I'm kind of exploring these ideas and making new stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't. I started off last time with just, uh, basically just the character you know I, I decided that I wanted to do Luigi and uh, I'll give you a little if I can pull up a couple other references and I, after the last stream I I left off in the head and I got to a point where I was just really excited and you know I stayed a little bit late at work and ended up working on the character a little bit more so I ended up getting to about right here so I've just got Luigi kind of honed in just all the primary stuff there, but now it's about getting that Blade Runner infusion and starting to explore the, the sort of crossover and the real mashup. Because as of right now, the only thing, the only mashup that I really have is the last time somebody in the chat suggested uh, doing this guy. His character's name is Gaff. Are you guys familiar with this guy? He uh, He's sort of like the right hand to uh, Deckard, the main guy. So you've got... Deckard and let's oh, see where do I even have an image of Deckard in here? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, so you got Deckard, which the more I thought about it, it's almost a perfect crossover. I mean, you guys tell me what you think, but to me, this makes total sense. You got Mario is Deckard, and you got Gaff as Luigi. So Gaff is sort of like he's kind of helping him along, giving him some tips here and there, um, sort of the wise the wise buddy <laughs> to, to the main character. And then I kept thinking about, you know, what, what would be the final, trying to get an idea for what the final goal is going to be. I kind of want to do a scene. Maybe I'll do it in the background. The focus is to work on the character with you guys and you watch it all sort of play out and see all the process that, that goes into it. If you're interested in doing stylized characters, you know, I don't particularly stick to one style. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I just like to do things, and I have the ability to do that at Pixel Logic. But in this case, I want to do something that is stylized, sort of mixed with realism in that way. And I was looking at, you know, I was just kind of Googling, Googling uh, Gaff and images, and he's got that quote, too bad she won't live. And I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a story or a narrative with maybe Princess Peach is one of the replicants, and there's sort of like this thing playing out. So I'm trying to explore those ideas. If you guys have suggestions, I'm all for it. Um, today's stream, I really want to get away from, um, you know, I've gone in and I've done a bunch of extra stuff. And if we got, what is that thing I'm using for reference? Oh, uh, that was from Abdul on YouTube. Yeah, the this right here is actually uh, built in within ZBrush. If you haven't used it, it's called Spotlight. Um, I, if you watch any, if you catch any of my other streams, you'll see me using this as my primary referencing tool, mainly because, especially for the streams, I only really have one monitor and me looking over on my other screen might not be good. Sometimes you just like to have it in front of you. So spotlight, you can actually go into the texture palette and the spotlight enable option is right here. Um, so for example, I could, let's just go, if I import any images, I can go to MISGRAPH. Say I go into my Blade Runner folder. Oh yeah, which by the way, if you're familiar with the Blade Runner universe, Gaff is the guy that does the the origami. So I got into this. It's like, well, maybe there's a scene where Gaff and uh, uh, Deckard, Super Mario and, and Luigi, are like I don't know at a coffee shop or something, and Gaff's um, he hands him a Yoshi uh, piece of origami. So I might actually work on that today and like make a little Yoshi origami. But for the spotlight stuff, if you import an image, I can select it first and then you'll see some of these options open up and then I can click add to spotlight. So if I have images in here already, it's going to add this to that pot. So I just click add to spotlight and the light box menu opens up. But if I close it, you'll see it just dumped it into this thing. And then once it's once the images have been added, essentially you get this uh, spotlight controller, this wheel. So the wheel you can toggle. Turning the wheel basically controls. If you click outside of the images, anywhere outside, it pulls the whole thing globally. And then if you select on any image, you can bring this up, and you have these this dial with controls. So I can scale this up and down. I can turn the opacity up and down for all these. Um, there's some really cool tiling. So I could do this little. Let me move this over so you can see this tile proportional. If you click this, it just randomizes them based on the actual image sizes. So just get sort of a board. Um, but the great thing about this is if you kind of get one that you like, 
Um, I could say, like, if I wanted to set up my reference really quick, like maybe I'm working on Deckert. What I like about this is that I can keep the images at the scale that I want. So first I could take all these guys, maybe tuck those in the corner, and then bring him up, and maybe put him up here, and then let's go grab Gaff, maybe put him somewhere. I can just maybe stack him below, right? And I can use it this way. So once I've got them arranged, if I click Z, that turns the wheel off, and now I can go back to rotating and moving around, and I'm using this as reference. The only caveat to this is that this tool was originally built as a texturing tool. So, you know, I could take like an image like this, for example, and I could go in, you know, turn the opacity down just to kind of see through it. And you have two options. So when I click the wheel off, this is going into a spotlight projection mode. So say if I grab I don't know, the standard brush, whatever brush you use for painting, turn off Z add and turn RGB on. Essentially what I'll do is if I select the, the whatever object I have selected, it's only going to paint on the selected subtool. So I've got the, I don't know, the overalls picked up right here. And if I go through and I paint through it, turning symmetry off, no Z add, you'll see that it's actually projecting this as texture. So this is the original usage of this, and it's a great tool for texturing if you're doing a likeness or you want to sort of get some skin tones or all kinds of, really the options are endless. Even the texture of the hat I could use to texture clothing and things like that, which I may end up doing, you know, once I get to the painting process of this stream. But what I like about this is the, when you set up your scene here, if I got my images over here for reference, I like to turn the opacity all the way up and then turn the wheel off what you run into is that if I am trying to sculpt, like say I go in, let me select white and do a quick color fill object. So it's back to that. If I go in and I try and sculpt, you see I get no effect. So when Spotlight has images in the activation mode, it doesn't allow you to sculpt on the surface with most brushes. The move brush will work. Uh, I believe that's the only one that works. But every, everything else, the only thing that works is painting. So the Z add option, no go. But easy uh, workaround, we have an option for this. So you can go into the brush palette, go down to the auto masking palette. Oh no, sorry. Well, wow, it's been a while. I'm, this is what happens when I start using custom UI. You forget where things are. Uh, brush, samples, and then at the bottom, you have the spotlight projection, which you'll see down here, I've added to my own custom UI, so I don't have to go to the settings. So if you turn this off with the images on, I can sculpt and keep working, right? So it allows you to just use it as reference. And then also what a great, a great thing I like about it is with that spotlight projection on, if for example, sometimes I just, sometimes I want to quickly look at something and then take it away and not just not stare at it basically and get you know wrapped up in oh it's not looking right or I can't get it to match so sometimes I just want to turn it off completely so you can actually so Z turns the wheel on and then when the wheels off if you press shift Z this turns everything off so even if that spotlight projections on I can go back to sculpting so I can hit shift Z to toggle these things on and then the best thing about this is if I go to texture I can save this spotlight so I can go, I usually keep in my project folders, I'll keep like a spotlight, I'm gonna rename this spotlight ref, I call them spotlight ref boards, stealing that from Pinterest. I'll, I usually keep a folder with that and I'll put my, like the one I just had up is my compilation, but if I do compilation spotlight, say custom, you know, name it something, I can save this. And even if I go in, say I rearrange these really quick, and put I just did the tile proportional and that puts them back to their sort of default arrangement and then I can go back to texture and I can load that and it's going to keep those images in the same place so if you got a setup that's working for you you're focusing on like the face of a character or something it's nice to be able to just have it in the same place and not have to constantly be rearranging so that's very long explanation of spotlight but I hope that answers your question um, I'm going to get back to the questions real quick Mm, yeah, Nigel Gear says, Solomon, do you know if the Twitch community guidelines update will affect a ZBrush artist? Mm, I couldn't say for certain for the Twitch community guidelines. Um, that's a good question. It, nude models might not, I would bet, within my experience with other things related to this, most likely it's not not safe. <laughs> so I, I, why, What? In, for what particular reason? Are you streaming on Twitch or... Hey, <laughs> Dougie's back with the Pokemon reference. 
Is that a Pokemon reference? Maybe Lord of the Rings? I don't know. Sa Sauron? <laughs> hey, Mortar, Mortar Caner, how's it going? Okay, so... Yeah, Nigel Gear, sorry, I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately, but I'd say play it safe, you know, just to, just because. I mean, we can't even put certain, we can't even play music through through Twitch and YouTube, so I can't imagine that, you know, images and the copyright gets involved. Cool, you're just starting streaming, that's great. Um, just doing ZBrush? This has been a fun experience for me, honestly, I, uh... You know, I teach regularly evenings, and and you know, I've been doing it for a couple years now at different schools. We're in Los Angeles, so I'm teaching at different colleges and institutions. But this stuff, I think, I mean, this is pretty much how I like to run my classes. Um, you know, get really hands-on with the students and with all of you. Some of you guys are pros, and maybe you're just tuning in to hang out, which I appreciate that if you are. Um, but it's this is a really fun and sort of freeing experience being able to do this stuff. So, without further delay, I'm gonna get rolling but for any of you that have been watching the last stream i want to i want to be true and authentic to what i said and go through everything with you but with everything said that i left off at about uh basically if you know we'll go back to here so i was about here i got to the point where i had blocked out the body you can see if you look at the topology this was using z spheres and if you're not familiar with z spheres that's basically just grabbing this little red pokeball <laughs> another Pokemon reference and you can basically add appendages to these things maybe grow out for say we're building a body so I go through and start filling this space in maybe this is like the shoulders All right so you're blocking out some shapes and then you can go into your adaptive skin menu and put it into a preview mode let's go no Dynamesh yeah so it just gives you something to quickly you know generate a, a mesh and then turn it into something else or use it for a while and then maybe turn it into something else later so that was the process but um i guess my question to all of you is uh any of you that were tuned into the old one the new ones you probably don't mind too much i'm happy to go through and explain it but i essentially kind of start i left off at you know i took that z sphere body reshaped it a little bit and uh well let me let me check the chat real quick uh so your Nigel, your stream is uh, oriented to anime characters. Nice. That's challenging. If you're doing that in 3D, my hat's off to you. I struggle with the 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 dimension transfer between 3D to 2D or 2D to 3D in that way, where you know you have the certain the characters' faces they don't have the same depth, so getting the eyes sort of tapering in the right way. Uh, Japan right now is exploding with ZBrush, especially ZBrush Core. And I've seen tons and tons of anime figures that are just incredible, and, and they're using ZBrush for all these things. And it's truly an art to, you know, I'm sure some of you watch some of our other streams, you watch people like Shane Olson, who really have a knack for getting the style down, and they understand the, the contour and the surface, and the it's really just the silhouette, trying to get silhouette to work in stylized is, I think, almost more challenging than realism in that way. You know, doing a Disney-style character in 3D can be very, very challenging. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I'm going to move on. And if you, so I, my plan is just, uh, what I want to do today is get into doing some more, um, get away from the sculptural part too much. I might do, I'm thinking what I like about Gaff is I want to start to do, get the crossover going. So let's see here. You know what? I'm going to do a quick thing. I'm going to get a, get a Gaff board going. So I'm going to get rid of. Gosling. And strip down, maybe just make a board. So I'm actually clicking on the images, and at the bottom you'll see this little X for the spotlight wheel, and you can delete the image. And we'll get rid of all the non essential. I kind of like, I mean, this is, I feel like this is safe. But the, uh, let's see, oh, tile proportional. Oh, uh, then one thing to mention too with this is what I love about the the control is these tile options. If you select, there's one image I want to look at. Um, for example, say this one. If I click on it and then you click this tile selected. So if I move this over, it has that little tile selected. So select it. It makes that one big and then fits everything else below it uh, relative to you know their their own scales. 
So it kind of allows you to just quickly grab one, but then keep everything sort of lined in with this space here. So if I just want to keep an image there like that. And then I'm going to go to texture. I'm going to save this one as gaff. Oh, but what I was getting to is um, I actually need a couple more images. I want to do his, maybe his trench coat. I'm going to say I'll grab this one, this one. Add these to the wheel. Oh, lost it. One second. I'm just going to load up really quick. Oh yeah, uh, Mortar Kaner, you mentioned in Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I actually a couple coworkers and I, Kyle, who's managing and running ZBrush Live in the background, he turned me onto it. I was a huge <laughs> Dragon Ball Z nerd in you know middle school, and that game looks incredible. I completely agree. It's it's a really top notch. I mean, it, I've never seen a game translate like that and have the like, you know, the, the old one had that sort of cell shade kind of look still, which was okay. It was stylized in that way. But this one just has the, its next level. It looks so good. It looks like very true to the, you know, the anime, like the cartoon was was so awesome. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Oh, yeah, I think I quick saved. Good old quick save there to save the day. Quick save the day. That should be what it's called. Never thought about that. So let's go. Let me just load up that. Let's see if that spotlight ref board saved. So pro tip with the spotlight wheel. If you enable the wheel while it's on, you can actually, instead of importing into the texture palette, you can import straight into the spotlight board. So leaving the press Z to leave the wheel on, go to texture, import, and actually this allows you to um, go back here. Whoops, I want Blade Runner. Select multiple so I can click one, then control click. What were the other ones I wanted? This and this. There we go. Sweet. Anytime you have, it does pick up like pure black. You can actually grab the contrast and cut out all the black parts of the image. So it actually allows you to sort of create alphas and cut out any background elements in that way. But I always, for reference, I always turn, take the contrast and put it at, it's like right at like the 520, you know, just about six o'clock, just a little past it. And then, whoop, there we go. Click that to turn it off. Yeah, so anyway, sorry for the delay. Let me save this really quick just in case I lose it. Some images, depending on scale, Spotlight will have, if you have tons and tons of images, that crash occurs at times. So just be careful if you if you have really, really large images. I've found that that tends to be in it. And it, the formats are all over the place. Sometimes there's some kind of corruption with the images. But I've got this thing saved now. And what I want to do is maybe do that crossover. So you know, I've got Luigi. I started doing the, uh, where are we at here? We got the stash. stash. We'll say stash OG. So this is the original Super Mario stash. And then the one that I started modifying to per you guys, once somebody else in the stream suggested maybe trying to do the crossover. So what's the difference? This one and this one? Oh, they're the same. Yeah, let's delete that one. There we go. So it's starting to take that, the, the concept of him. You know, he's got that, uh, oh, you know what? I just realized that my cam is probably sitting underneath. I'm going to keep these over here. So I can tile unified. Sweet. 
and then let's bring this one and this one because I really like this idea I've been trying to come up with some ideas on how to make him a little bit more interesting and get away from the Super Mario world and I like this if you remember this scene if you've seen the movie I feel like you'd have to if you're watching <laughs> anything related to ZBrush or this world um, you know I was liking the just the the little details here with this sort of helmet that he's got and these straps so I might try and play around with that maybe give him a cap instead and then I'm thinking the the jacket and then the last thing that I do want to do is I want to get the gun going today you guys tell me what you want to do I can keep doing clothing maybe do the the trench coat and start blocking out that shape and maybe like a little bow tie and uh, then I wanted to get into doing some of the weapons so I'm the way I was kind of thinking this is Luigi's got his whole sort of separate story um, Luigi's Mansion if you guys have played it and he's got this really awesome uh, sort of like ghost pack so instead of him maybe sucking up ghosts he's sucking up replicants but then I want to take this sort of pack here and then infuse it with the let's see Weapon, weapon. Yeah, there we go. So, Blade Runner. Uh, so, I gotta. I want to try and do this. If you guys want, I think I kind of want to start with that now. Then maybe I'll do the trench coat last. So, I was thinking maybe do some Z modeler for this. Um, get into doing some insert curve, or I'd like to use. I've actually been using. If you're been using ZBrush, you guys are users. We've added some new deformers that have some really cool bending options to get these sort of hoses and effects, but maybe replace his flashlight uh, with the the Blade Runner pistol. I think that seems to be the move. Or maybe try and infuse those two together to get a combination of both. Maybe change this up a little bit. What do you guys think? You want? Would you rather watch me do that, or would you rather watch me just keep sculpting? Because I can I can do all kinds of things. Greetings Pro 4210. How's it going? Alright, so uh Vols Volsuin? am I saying that right? Yeah, so today this is uh my new show. I'm trying to get started with you guys, ZBrush Mashup. So this stream and probably the next one, I'll be finishing up a mashup of Luigi and Blade Runner. So the general topic was Super Mario and Blade Runner. I'm going to do Luigi as a version of Gaff, and then maybe do a version of Super Mario later as Deckard. So trying to kind of marry these two ideas. So I'm going to get rolling on this. I think I might just quickly do the start getting the backpack going. Texture, save spotlight. So I'm going to save the Gaff one super quick. And then let's go texture import. Let's get those weapons. So this actually added it to the texture palette. That's usually a little safer. If you got big images that if you ever have too much and it's crashing, just try and do that. And then texture import. There we go. So let's get rocking. I've been doing a lot of sculpting lately. I feel like it's be a nice break to get into, mm, I don't know, some Z modeler maybe. Stuff like this. Let's go. I'm going to delete the old guy. So that's where I left off last stream. I took a little bit of time. Basically, the extracted the Z sphere body. What I do want to do is. Uh, See, that's the shirt and sleeve. So let's go. Yeah, I've got the overalls here. So this actually is just the shirt. I'm just going to do a little cleanup really quick. If you, if any of you are you know, new to ZBrush and you don't know any particular features, I'm happy to 
elaborate and go into some of this stuff. I'll keep an eye on the chat as much as I can. Yeah, Z model is always fun. Uh, yeah, everybody knows Luigi is a replicant, right? I completely agree. But as far as my custom UI goes, you can check out um, my ZBrush Central Sir Scallywag. I'm trying to get people on here. Sir underscores. I'm sharing all my custom UI stuff there. Um, but you got to drop me a line and send me a message if you're if you're a ZBC member. Um, if you're not, go to zebracentral.com and sign up. And my username is sir underscore scallywag. And I have a, a thread just specifically for these streams. So some of my, let's go to say this one. Yeah, so this was like one of my first streams doing nano mesh and building spaceships and then was giving some techniques for using array mesh and all these kinds of things. But in here, I've shared one of the versions of this custom UI that I'm using. So if you have any questions about that or things that are looking like they're not in the right place, it's probably because they're not. Um, but I'll try my best to illustrate if you do have questions. So something I like to do is like I want to split this stuff and delete things instead of going in with like selection lasso and like trying to eyeball it by hand. Um, I have auto groups assigned to control shift nine. So I can auto group that and just grab this. And then I made my own custom menu, so my little toolkit. And I have these sub palettes in here, and that's mapped to the two key. So then if I gotta do things like delete hidden, I keep that here. And then I can keep it just gives me maximum space, which I really love. So let's see, we got for now. I could do a little close convex hole for now. So we got the shirt in there. Yeah, so I just extracted off the shirt from that Z-Sphere rig. And then, let's see, the only thing that I do need to do I'm going to do a little slice circle. And maybe just do a quick little extrude. Insert. This is where I kind of get into kind of marrying a bunch of ZBrush features together. So I can divide this up a little bit to smooth that out. And then maybe do just a little polish. So polish will relax all your verts. But it, it allows you to evenly space out your verts and your edges. But it does sort of inflate things in a way where it doesn't keep those creases. So if you have polygroups and things, you could do polish by features, which keeps it really, each time it sees a different unique polygroup, it helps to sharpen those edges. So I kind of take use of that anywhere I can get polygroups assigned, like places like, you know, the neck and the wrist. I can use the lasso to highlight, to remove an edge loop, use that auto group. So this allows me to grab this, grow it out, make a group here. So then I got one there, 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 and there. And then anytime I just need to do a quick mirroring and welding, this is also inside of my custom menu. I can just do a quick mirror and weld. Oh, make sure I delete subs. Delete higher. There we go. All right, so then another thing too is in there, I got my deformation essentials, so I can do that quick polish here. So give him some kind of a little turtleneck or whatever it is that he's wearing. Pretty sure they wear turtlenecks, right? I don't know, the whole concept of Super Mario in general is really bonkers, like we all have to admit. But one of the best games of all time. So I just want to make a little adjustment, do a mask and a blur, and then I can use the gizmo to just maybe bring this down. Yeah, 
yeah, so it's like, it gives you a little, doing stuff like this, I feel like, is a little bit easier sometimes than, say, like, if you are a sculptor and you go in with, like, the standard brush, and I use my, the stroke, lazy mouse settings I keep up here, so I can turn my lazy radius up, and just, you know, even going in and, like, no spotlight projection, like, carving away, like, it gets a little tedious, and it's hard to stay even, so I usually try and make use of low topology as much as I can. And then let's see, we want to grab. I'm just doing a little cleanup from the last session. Make sure everything's kind of in line. And I like to do sometimes, I've moved the gizmo to the right just because I don't know. I'm really ridiculous. Like, I, I'm so lazy, I don't want to go up across the screen. So I just want to go path of least resistance, which maybe this could even be better. But turning this off. I get the old transpose tool and I can drag this along, give myself an axis of alignment, and just kind of stretch this over. All right, cool. So yeah, all this stuff, super low poly, like I'm not doing a whole lot. I extracted all of this stuff from that Z-Sphere body and cleaned it up. The hands, this is something that, you know, I did actually with Dynamesh. I used a Dynamesh cube and then took a bunch of cylinders and just merged them all together, Dynameshed it, and then Z remesh it at the end to get me a clean shape. So I spent a little bit of time just kind of working this stuff. I even went in to Z remesher, depending on the cleanliness and the, the evenly space uh, space areas on the mesh that it Z remeshes from. Most of the time, if you keep you get down to a low enough level, I always start off with just Z remeshing at the default target poly count five, and then I see what I get. Like you just kind of remesh it, let it do its thing, and then you'll get. Most of the time, it is depending on the shapes, you'll get a clean edging all the way around, which is what I want for stuff like this, because then I can go in, like in this case, I want to keep going lower. So I just go turn on half, so cut it in half each time it remeshes. So go down a little bit more, down a little bit more until I get what I need. But by doing that is you end up getting clean edgings around these shapes, and then I can go in and add like a little edge loop here. And then when I smooth it, I get a nice crease in those areas. So that's kind of like the, the workflow in that case. So, I, you know, it's sort of a organic process. We keep adding new things, and the old ways might have worked before, but trying to summon out some of these new meshes, like well, I see a lot of people staying in Dynamesh forever. For me, I like having the option to have something that has subdivisions that eventually I can go up and add little details, but go down to the lowest to do silhouette changes and have a softer more effective brush, especially with the move brush. I love to just, you know, kind of go around in the three quarter and keep checking things with a big draw size. So anyways, I gotta do something here, huh? This has been a heck of a day. So we got the backpack, let's see. So I'm gonna get into some Z modeler. I'm gonna switch over to a new tool. And if you haven't used with the gizmo on, if you haven't used any of these yet, these are huge. If you put the gizmo right in the center, uh, if you click the customize option, we get these transformation types, these primitives. So these are sort of the next level. This is a new addition to ZBrush in the last version. So I can grab, say, I don't know, Polycube, and this brings us up. If I turn on Polyframe, you have these controllers, and I can quickly and easily control the edge spans. So maybe I just want to do two across in all. There we go. And then now we can go and we can start working. So before I even have to do an easy modeler, let's tuck this guy down here for now. That'll be my primary focus. And then make sure I'm looking at it from the front. So we can do something like this. Go into the menu now. So this is done. As soon as we start like moving stuff around, You'll see that the, the gizmo, when it's orange, it means that it has something in here that it's that it hasn't uh, accepted yet. So if I like go in and start smoothing and like readjusting this thing, it'll go away. But before I do that, I can go in here and actually do something different. So instead of shaping it with you know the move brush or other ways, I can actually go into the deformer. And this is gonna actually, because it's a cube, the deformer is actually wrapped around the whatever mesh you have selected. But this actually gives me the option to, I can match the divide. 
So I'm going to do the exact same number of edges. So you have X, Y, and Z. The orange cones add those layers. There we go. And then let's do symmetry. So when you want to turn symmetry on, I can go symmetry and X. So crank that up, and you'll see it only shows the left side now. So when that's all the way up to 1, you'll see it goes from the number is right there below the gizmo, 0, 1. So now it's on. So 1 will tell you parallel, 2 is mirror, which is what I want. I want a mirror. So then control, drag, clears the points. And now we can go in, clicking on an individual point, and then shift click. I can make, wait, what do I want to do? I want to do this, 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 and this. Or I can just do control and select points, which might be a little faster. So I got a little symmetry going. Maybe take all of these guys. And now I can kind of just start free flowing. So just clicking and dragging on individual points, you get. A nice effect. Now you'll see that the deformer points, you see that they're starting to lose their relationship to the underlying mesh. So this has to do with, if I zoom out, you'll see when I hover over it, the smoothness. So this actually sort of adds a softening effect. If I take this and reduce this down to zero in all of these axes, this is actually going to give me an exact depiction. So it's basically like giving you full control of these verts individually and allowing to just kind of readjust. But in this case, I just got way too far ahead of myself. <laughs> so and let's say I want to move on. So I'm just going to go in, click Accept. Now the gizmo goes away. So now I got this piece. And let's go add a little subdivision. Just do a little scaling. So maybe for these back parts, I might do a little flattening of those. And then start doing some Z. Clean up that. Oh, I need to make sure I delete those subdies. So sometimes I'll add a subdivision just to give me some more points to do stuff like masking and rearranging things. And then go back and then remove them and use that low subdivision to kind of work stuff out. And then maybe do a little combination of just the move brush if you want to move a few verts around. All right, now for all this stuff, let's see. So using a little clip curve, flatten that out. Now this is where that, uh, this is something I do a lot. If you watch my streams, I'm sorry I reiterate on this all the time, but I just think it's awesome. So once you've get, like say you have something like this where you've got 
you know, a nice flat surface there using clip curve or whatever method you use. I want to start making use of my polygroups as quickly as possible. It's just much easier to take use in full advantage of all the things in ZBrush. As far as speed goes, you kind of can't beat just the what po what polygroups give you. So what I like to do is go in. I have this assigned, but I'll show you polygroups. Just you can either do group by normals. There's other options, but group by normals is what I like. So the normals, depending on the direction, the changes, it's going to recognize that this is clearly different than everything else, and it will auto-assign a polygroup, which is great for ZModeler if you're used to using it. But then even further, you can actually go and take this max angle and group by normals, reduce this down a lot lower, and it'll actually give you unique ones, re take the range a little bit higher. A default, I think, is 25, or 45, sorry. Yeah, so now you see at, I don't know, roughly 24, I got a polygroup here, 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 you know, all these different areas, and I can even go in now and just reassign, you know, other areas. So maybe I just want this one to be the same. I can just use selection rectangle, grab this, 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 and this. Let's turn display properties on, and that. So inverse that, and then just do Control W, which in the polygroups menu is group visible. So I got that together. Now for the Z modeler part. I can go in and I usually just keep it on QMesh and I can do polygroup all. So I can start doing a little extrusion for say this piece. Let's go extrude poly loop. Do a nice little bevel. And what's awesome, the, the reason why I like this, I'm going to set this max angle back to 45. So my hotkey for that feature is Control Shift 9. So that groups it in these areas. And then uh, the best, this is what I like about this, is that I can, inside a geo, you can apply creases. So instead of actually going in and inserting edge loops and adding to your poly count, I can keep this very low and control what it looks like, but still see the smooth view with the dynamic subdivision preview. So when I turn this on, it smooths everything out. And depending on the level of edge loops and things like that, if I crank this up, everything's very, very smooth, right? especially even in this area. Like you look at that hard edge and smooth, it kind of loses that texture. So by doing that group by normals, in most cases, if I go, if I get the right setting, like sometimes you'll see this one's a little different than that. But if I can maybe find the right range. you go a little bit higher than 45 you see now it's assigned it to that without catching the other so it's basically like the higher it is the less it's going to catch these very specific angles that are transitioning so it has less of a sort of strong effect but going all the way down it's searching for more drastic changes in those surface normals and it gives you that sort of rainbow effect but getting these polygroups inside of dynamic you have the this sort of associates itself with the crease options so in crease you can do crease by polygroup so that is my control shift C hotkey. So I do that really quick and now I can smooth it and I got a nice, very clean edge. So then I just need to do a little polygroup here, which I can do a manual polygroup, poly loop, and then control shift C, smooth that out. All right, so you can kind of see like where that's going. And any other, some of these areas just my technique is I don't want to go back and forth to those things, so I leave it at 45. I get what I get, and then I do the rest by hand. So polygroup, polyloop again. Control Shift U is my uncrease all. There we go. Now for the, you got this big old circular part. Might space this out a little. Now another cool technique, if you've ever, I'm gonna add an edge loop in here. Kinda, and then now I'm just using the slide edge loop option to evenly space these out. But this thing, I want this to sort of extrude out. It looks like it's coming straight out. So I've got this little taper. Just check it on the chat really quick. 
looks like you guys oh yeah I'm talking about z classroom highly recommend it if you're oh well i guess i just noticed if you're looking for intros um oh you're looking for uvs and stuff okay yeah z, z classroom's great highly recommend it and we've got more stuff coming we got some great new series coming out for beginners and more advanced stuff but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just mask use the mask option and do this one and this one and then inverse it and then turn on the gizmo and then I can alt click to the unmask point now by default because I have symmetry on my symmetry is on you'll see I get a gizmo on both I want to just flatten it I want to use the scale to flatten to where the gizmo is which is sort of by alt clicking here it goes to the average middle space of whatever's unmasked but if I turn on local symmetry this is going to allow me to keep that consistent so I can actually flatten it just grabbing the x-axis and stretching it towards the middle so I'm just clicking dragging towards the middle a couple times and bring this out and I might tweak that later but what I wanted to get is a nice perfectly flat area and now I'm going to do insert and little trick if you ever need to get an edge loops exactly in the middle between two you, um, by default you've got the insert single edge which this is just click and kind of eyeball it but if I undo it go back to multiple if you do this multiple you have a bunch of settings one particularly is the specific resolution so I can set this down to one and then just click once and it puts it dead center in the middle but it does add a poly group which for now that's fine I can just leave it but I wanted to get this sort of evenly spaced out in this area because now I want to go to the point and do a little split so you can do split a point or a ring so I'm going to do a split point and that thing looks a lot bigger so let's make this a little bit more give it some more space and then maybe slide this down so it's somewhere in the middle a little bit more so I'm just alt clicking on the pivot point that I want it to be and then just using the scale to kind of bring it back in and let's do split so now this gives me a nice ring so when I smooth that that looks great but then what I want to do is now I want to do a little tweaking so I see that this thing's got some shadow in there there's a little inner bevel maybe or some sort of inner ring before it extrudes out so let's go hover over this and let's do an inset polygroup all and I want to do by default it'll do anything with that polygroup color let me just make this its own so I change this to inset region by polygroup all and then now I can do this little inner extrusion And go back to my inset and bring whoops if it assigned a new one I can just go a single and just paint these when in doubt just paint it <laughs> whoops and let's go back to inset a little too much or not enough and then I'll do my poly group by normals or actually the I might not even need to do it I could just do crease by poly groups automatically and there we go so then another oh, and then another thing to point out too is I do have, if I go back to the original split, I'm also realizing that, let's go split point, if I do a ring, we can try, if you keep it at split and point, we can triangulate this. So triangulating actually gets a better, uh, as far as keeping a perfect circle, doing it as the, um, uh, um, as the quad center 
sorry, the quad port, that, that doesn't have the perfect when it's smooth. The, the algorithm doesn't perfectly keep that shape. So triangles work very well for this kind of stuff. So I'll just do that really quick again. So you got the inner, just a little one, and then another. Q mesh polygroup. Oh, that one just wants to stay with another. Get rid of those guys. So I'm just making sure I've got unique polygroups for everything. Now I can do stuff like maybe slide this edge ring in a little to get that space in there. And then let's Q mesh that. And I can even, let's try this, maybe do a one more tiny bit one. And then cool trick, like if I smooth this out right now, that's where we're at. But see what I want to do is let's do crease first see what it's like smooth for that inner part you know I see this sort of like soft light maybe it's not a perfectly flat piece so if I wanted to do just like a little bit of like sort of bubbling effect a quick and easy way is go in here do an insert multiple edge let's go back to interactive resolution and actually do the interactive elevation so you can click oops let's see if we can get this Do insert a single. Got to get the right surface normal. There we go. So right here, I'm going to go back to multiple. So click and drag to add your edge, edge loops. And as I go left and right, you'll see that it kind of adds this little, just bumps it up a little bit. And then let's go in here and delete these ones. And then hovering over the edge, go to collapse and do or close convex hole. So if I just click that, it's just going to re-add it, but it kind of flattens it out. And if I have anything, I can just go ahead and mask all of these really quick. Or I could just do move line to normal just allows me to bring these out just a bit. There we go. And if I want to it's still getting a little bit of that effect, so you can use the like the bit that the sort of inflation's going up. So I can hover over these and just delete these extra edges. There we go, and maybe just slide them to evenly space them out. Let's do a little extrusion in here too. Cool. All right, so that's getting there. I definitely don't want this one. But I do want to check. I don't want this to be so perfectly crisp edged. So this is where those creases come in really well. This is where that association between dynamic and creases really shines when you go into your, so I've been creasing by polygroups, but the crease level right now is set to 15 by default, which means that when I turn dynamic on, it's going to smooth everything out and those creases are going to hold where they currently were until they reach level 15 which in this case most of the time you'll never reach that but if you take this first we have to turn dynamic off if I take this down say I want it to start smoothing at dynamic level 2 if I go to dynamic if this is at 2 it doesn't do anything All right so you can see that you know the edges are still pristine and they're not smoothing at all where those creases are, but as soon as I go up to three, 
that's where you start to see that transition. So whatever you have it set to, as soon as you surpass that number, the higher you go, the more that it's going to start to smooth. So it just kind of gives it that last sort of CG hard edged effect, which for this stuff, it seems like that works really well. OK, moving on. So I got that piece going, but I really messed up the top part. So I'm going to just start sliding this stuff back. One thing I love is the slide points. So I can kind of just like readjust things really easily. So like averaging out the space between one vert and another usually gives you just a better smooth effect. If you've been in the CG industry long enough and you know before ZBrush became a thing and you had to learn how to block model and do extrusions and be a vert pusher. <laughs> I think my first, my first, technically speaking, my first 3D sculpture ever was taking a plane with, you know, 100 or so verts and just matching it to an image, just pulling and pushing and pulling. And to me, that, you know, I was 16, I think, when I started. And that was amazing. But then I saw ZBrush and everything changed. <laughs> All right, so then let's go. And then I'm going to bring this in so I can contain it a little bit better. Cool. The only thing is let's grab. So I'm doing the, this is something I also use a lot. If I grab just one of these poly groups and I've got a part, portion of it visible. Control shift X is the hotkey for visibility grow, grow all. So control shift A brings everything back. But if I undo control shift X grows to the next edge span. So as long as it's a clean selection, like I have a perfectly flat piece, if I go up, it goes to that next edge loop and I can actually keep going. What I want to do is get up to this point. I'm gonna control A, which is the mask all option here. And then bring everything back. And now I can actually use the gizmo to kind of just bring this out and I think I want to take this now and slide this back up so this is what's really cool about this too is that because that was flat formally going up towards this direction it's starting to get some of that curvature. And then now when I go back, it's going to stay along that alignment much better. So I can kind of average it out, but then bring it back. Trying to keep that sort of bubbly kind of feel. And then another tip, like sometimes like what I'm doing is just pulling these outwards, just trying to get that sort of rounded shape there. But if you're looking at it in the way that I want it to come towards me, so based on the normal of the piece, if you hold Alt and then click and drag with the move, it actually just goes straight out towards that normal direction. So you can actually circumvent doing what I'm doing, like looking at it from the front like this. I could just do it maybe from a more of a quarter angle. All right, pretty good. Looks like this is sitting on top of something. Let's go move polygroup. There we go. Okay, pretty good. I wonder what happens if I delete this edge. Oh, also, I'm just realizing that 
that's why this thing isn't looking right because this thing looks like it actually is sticking out on the back side oh why didn't you guys tell me <laughs> I think it's oh, I'm looking at the chat now it's been going on So I messed up on this a little. Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to, let's strip this up. Go back to basics. Get rid of this. And get rid of that. So basically where these things meet, See, how would that work? Delete single. Yeah, so I want these verts and these verts to line up with this. And slide this up. Let's do a little delete. I don't think I need that edge loop either. a single edge right there. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out the shape here. So we got one. Let's add these extra little edge loops in here. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. Stitch this guy here. Sweet. Oh, quick question for all of you, since uh, I've sort of become obsessed with it lately. Side note while I'm working, has anybody been playing Fortnite? Because I'm obsessed. Stitch two points. Oh, that's
that's why. Oh, yeah. Uh, Obeyinator, you're on it right now. You're, are you literally playing right now? Because <laughs> if you are, I'm jealous. Yeah, Lonely Goblin, you will not be disappointed. I promise. It is uh, an incredible, incredible game. Tons of fun. Like, to me, I mean, I'm doing this stuff already almost every day in ZBrush. You know, just building things. It's just who I am. But there's something about that game that just... Like it just feeds that part in me. I just want. I, I like the building aspect even more than the battle royale. Like I just like I've spent hours and hours and hours on my home base, like just trying to get the base, you know, looking good. Like I haven't even done any missions yet, really. Like it's more. It's definitely over fortified for where I'm at in the game. I will say that. And then let's do this and this. And then let's see. That's also what I'm missing here is I need to close out these uh, inside faces. in there. Let's do this one. Um, sorry, I keep going back and forth with the chat. Um, new messages. What's the epic game launcher? I didn't. Tony Hawk let you build your own skate park. That is news to me. I haven't played Tony Hawk since '64. Like I think I've touched it. I've played on the PlayStation, but I still have my Nintendo 64 at home, so I have it on that for sure. I definitely missed out on those games. From a couple of my friends have been I, since I've been raving so much about Fortnite. Uh, I. Uh, A friend of mine was telling me about Fallout, and I was a huge fan of Fallout 3, but supposedly, so flip faces, I don't know when these normals got so messed up. Sorry, my mind is all over the place now that I'm thinking about Fortnite. Um, but I've heard Fallout is actually better I mean, as far as like customization goes, they have m even more options. That's what that's what I've heard. Bridge these edges, flip faces. There we go. Anybody else out there play um, the uh, Fallout customization? Like as far as bases go, I've just heard the bases are insane.
Um, Fallout 4 is what I'm thinking of, because there was Fallout 3, and then um, then Fallout New Vegas, and then now they have Fallout 4, which Fallout 4 has been out for a little while now. But, I mean, it's it's pretty nuts how the uh, like these cus- the customization has become like the biggest sort of attraction and f- you know free open everything you know that's kind of like the the mo it seems like with all these games which is my favorite part honestly like i can't get enough the more open world the more control i get over my space i just i end up playing games forever like i think the ones i'm playing the most would be Right now, Fortnite, and I was playing Shadows of Mordor. Anybody play that one? That's been a really fun game. Honestly, it's uh, I think it's underrated. Like I, I don't, I don't. I just feel like I don't see enough people talking about it. I guess maybe that's what it is. But it's a great. I mean, as far as like mechanics in the game goes, it's really awesome. Bridge that one. Sorry, guys. I just overcomplicated this whole thing for myself. Boom. So I'm using that right-click navigation to keep myself aligned in this space. Gracious. You know what, man? Forget about this. Since I rebuilt all this, I messed up from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is, when in doubt, just go back. And even better, let's go to topology, delete hidden. This is my always, if I need to clean up and I did something wrong, just get half. Quick save this baby. Now I got a better idea of where everything's going. Like I don't, technically speaking, I do not need that edge loop. I always do a quick little smooth just to make sure I don't have any holes in places that I wasn't aware of. If I didn't weld or connect edges, like right there, for example. Here we go. Great. Now let's delete these last remaining ones. Huh, why didn't I do that from the beginning? Oh, so much better. Now I can actually see what's going on. I was kind of getting lost in the inside parts after I changed everything. So now I can just do a quick uh, collapse, or sorry, close convex hole with let's do a quick mirror and weld first and then do it. Hmm, interesting. What's going on there? Wait, do I have symmetry on? Interesting. Delete hidden. Let's grab this guy.
part of it, I think, was because I... What did I start doing? It's because I started doing all that flipping faces. That's where I messed myself up. Some of these faces back here, just not quite gelling. I'm just going to realign this up super quick. made a catastrophe for myself. Okay, one more time. Split. Triangulate. Now, before I go any further, I need to mirror weld. And then let's do a little cleanup. Kind of want this to poke out in the back. Let's line all these ones up with this. Now we're looking good. Sorry guys, you guys are probably laughing at me like this guy. What's he doing over here? First, second, one more. Okay, great. So let's do a mirror and weld to get that center line and then dump in the extra edge loop here. Stitch and stitch. Something you could do if you're doing a lot of the same things, but like I've accidentally deleting polys. If I go over to the poly, I can tell these to do nothing. So like if I'm not dealing with polys for that much time, I can tell it do nothing. If I'm just doing stitching and sliding with points and inserting edge loops that can help circumvent additional clicks or anything like that that you do something you don't intend to. Okay, finally. Now, quick inset and let's let's freaking move on, yeah? Grab these. Let's 
cycle through, add a new polygroup. Oops, wrong one. I want to do the poly loop for this one. And then do, oh, I can still do poly loop. All right, now we're looking good. We don't need creases on, let's undo that. So I'm gonna assign this group and this group together. So again, the poly groups give you quick access to do this stuff, which is very nice. And if I wanted to just do a quick like edge loop to hold that off. Oh wait, what happened here? What am I missing on that? Oh, because it's disconnected. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do for that guy? Yeah, so what I need to do is actually select individuals to extrude that portion. Or, let's do this. I could just Q-mesh this polygroup to give that some extra thickness. There we go. I want to make this a little bit better. I can just grab this group. I could mask this off and then alt click on this point, which is putting it exactly at the center of that point and along the surface normals. And I can actually just scale or shrink this in if I want to. So turn on with symmetry, turn on local, and then I'll just keep it there in the center. I could use the Z modeler options too, but sometimes I just, I don't know, kind of bounce around, get a little in my own headspace and you don't always immediately think of the most efficient ways to do things especially when you're trying to be creative you know this is why proper planning goes a long way Right, so then if I go let's do Q mesh, that poly group, let's slide this edge loop in, and let's Q mesh the poly loop. Crease by, oh wait, hold on, now let's quick save. And grid this guy and this guy together. not go out so much. And you know what? That almost looked better before, I think. that poly group.
So stuff like this, this is where if it's giving you similar groups in some areas, do that auto group option in polygroups and just assign the separated shells like that to do quick groups and then assign a crease. There we go. All right, let's get moving. Can't believe how fast the time goes. Just messing around with this stuff. So I got to get like, I think I, well, I definitely started later. So I'll make sure I add in the extra time for everybody else who's tuning in. I want to get to the hose and the gun. Like I get that stuff rolling. I was thinking for the gun, I might do live booleans maybe. Try and experiment with some different techniques. And we could do stuff like this where, so now I've got this shape, but maybe I just want to smooth things out and just kind of average it out in a way that's a little bit better spaced as far as the verts instead of doing it by hand. So this is a trick that I do. Go in, let's just do, we got the crease by polygroups. And with dynamic on, this is what we get. So at level five, I'm just going to actually apply these. So now I actually have six subdivision levels. And then what I'm going to do is, Let's go in and just do a little polish by features. If we open up the circle, we can get a better effect. But with that extra geo, like finding the right level, if I go to like maybe four or three, I'm going to grab this, just mask that off, and then go into information with the open circle just kind of polished by features there we go so that kind of evens it out it just gives it more verts to doing it at the lowest level basically there's just so few verts that it, it really impacts it very strongly and it really destroys the mesh sometimes so going up a little bit higher now when I go down to the lowest it's got a much better shape and you'll see I just masked off the, the extrusions and things I didn't want to affect and now I've got a much better setup so let's get back to getting some details in on this thing. higher so I'm going back to low poly so I can do some more Z what do I want to do here okay so we got let me slide this over just a little bit I'm going to Stuff that I like to do, like that middle edge loop, I want to make that nice and clean. I can delete that one and then mirror and weld it again to get it back. But it just kind of made that top part a little bit more flat. And then now I can sort of slide this edge loop a little bit back. All right. see what happens here. So I'm going to assign this its own group and then inset the poly group. Add those creases in there to kind of get that to hold in nice. Sweet. Now, 
now I can really start pumping in the details. And so I, once I got everything in there, really just needed to do a better job of getting the base working. I just overcomplicated it. Uh, let's get its own group for this guy. Oh, I'm noticing that there's this nice little shape following that. Let's see if I can make that work before I get to this part. So and this is where doing individual sliding inverts is great, but you can actually slide edges. So I can, I mean, I could do all of them at once, but it's kind of tapering, so I can just do maybe Maybe just these ones first with the gizmo. Actually, you know what? I'm just realizing I should leave that one. Should do this guy. So now I'm just kind of softening that. I can go up towards that edge and kind of taper it down. So let's Q mesh single poly. Do all these ones. Oh, sorry, actually, uh, yeah, Q mesh is fine. I'm going to go up a little. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh, I see the Q mesh kind of did not connect. So for this, this is where I'll go. Do I need this edge? Nope. There we go. So, cool, cool trick. So, if no other edges in the way in that case, I want to bring this up and extrude it, but I don't want to go like QMesh is going to step up and connect there. But I can go in and just insert a single edge where I want it to connect, like say halfway up. And then now QMesh and it'll step. There we go. What? Oh, it's still trying to connect down here, though. Let's do this one, too. I'm going to insert another edge about the same height. Let's see how this steps up. Yeah, there we go. I'm just removing a few creases where I really don't need it. I'll come back to that later. It's almost there, but I'm not going to fiddle. Oh, I but I do actually need to fiddle a little bit more. So what I want to do is actually bring this, these edges back.
probably don't need to let that thing go too far. At the end of the day, I don't have to keep this topology. I can always add subdivisions and then Z remesh it later, but for now, yeah, you know, like that piece, I'm just gonna have to keep messing around with. I'm circumventing some of these edge loop flaws with just making some tries, which I don't like to do, but sometimes you just gotta. Or rather, you just get lazy. <laughs> so get lazy trying to find a way to actually make it a quad. Do it. Oops, stitch. Uh, crease. Polygroup. Let's check it. Polygroup. Poly loop. Hey, all right. Finally. All right. Moving on. So now that I got that thing in there. Now I can go in here. Sorry, if you guys are on the chat right now, I'm, I'll check that in a second. Good deal. Inset poly group, maybe just do a little inset. Okay, quick save. Think still going. Sweet. I don't think this is quite big enough.
Just trying to give myself some more space here so I can split this as wide as I want. Now we're rocking, so then what else do I want to do? I think we can re remove that crease. Just give this a little bit more fall off. Don't want to add edge loops in there, but let's see. Might be able to do this. Could inset this, whoops. Inset these. Shrink it down to about there. And then click these and do the exact same. Or maybe these ones. I just want to tidy these guys up. A quick way is you can use the alignment to kind of snap it and flatten this together. So then the thing is aligned now. So then I can go, let's grab this, get rid of that. Now let's do this edge. And then alt click to bring it to that, flatten that. And then now just do a little slide. I can fix that center line by just deleting the center edge loop. Maybe. Oh, clear the mask. Interesting. Is everything visible? Poly group. Can tidy that up in a little. So let's get auto group those. That's going to need a little work, but hey, let's, now we can auto group. Create 
increase by poly group. And if I want to hold these ones, you can do a little crease on these edges. But sometimes you get a little polarizing stuff. So if anything, we could go a little tip as far as selecting something when you're grabbing polygroups the way to select is actually not selecting on the face it's the vertex itself so sometimes if I just want to get just these pieces a quick way to do it is you can put just if you have an edge loop along the middle and have say a point here you can actually grab that like so so having that there makes it a little bit easier but the only thing I want to do is grab this I don't like that. Makes it too complicated with the smoothing. Get rid of these guys. Now I can align it to somewhere in that area and just maybe. Oops. Stretch it out, make it a little bigger, and put an edge loop on that. No, nope, that's going to mess up all that. I'll get to that later. I'll figure out some way to turn that, make it a little smoother. So where are we at? I got this stuff going. I'm going to check in the chat really quick. I'm see what you guys are up to. Uh, Al Frost, hey, what's going on? And Abdul, you're asking what can you recommend for develop a, a modeling logic? And you mean as far as this kind of stuff, like block modeling? Yeah, this this is very easy overall. I mean, I'm kind of just fiddling around and experimenting with topology. And as far as like a modeling logic, especially with like quads like this, like clean edge rings, like using quads in this way, having clean edge rings around the shapes that you want to have maintain edge, edge loops is kind of essential. That's the most important thing. And also the hardest thing sometimes. I mean, it's almost, it's like a puzzle every time you do it. So, you know, as you get into like doing the kind of stuff that I'm experimenting with right now, it's like, it gets a little hairy sometimes, but the, it's one of those things like you almost kind of have to experiment and you get you start to learn that some convergences of points in some areas are a lot more problematic than others and having a try in one place is not as bad as some people might say sometimes you kind of have to do that to circumvent some of the things that I'm running into you know just trying to keep this stuff clean and and smoothing all this stuff out so you know definitely get in and experiment and that's really like the only thing is just trying to maintain clean rings around the shapes that you need to you know like I'm not doing the best job of like keeping this stuff perfectly consistent but it's working out for the most part minus a few little flaws here and there so like let's see I want to do this really quick like this edge loop like see how this is sort of flowing around it's going down towards the bottom now one thing that you can do with like the logic is consider the direction in which all this stuff is going what's going on with this guy by the way oh interesting when did that happen did I duplicate this somehow um, redirecting things like focusing on keeping your flow would be my suggestion but then paying attention to areas where you can continue like like see how this thing is wrapping around basically like when it comes to b building things you want to build in the direction of the shapes that they're going like it, it just so happens that the tools are sort of shaped around the physical world especially like if you ever get into building topology for video game characters or film characters building around the shapes of the the way that our muscles move it ends up aligning with the physical sort of structure of how it works so like your eyes the obicularis you have this circular pattern when building clean topology to be animated you have to have the proper kind of rings flowing in the right direction not shooting down in another direction where they would pull in a different way um, that's especially for organic rigid bodies 
really just comes down to getting creative with the way that you direct stuff. So like this, I could easily just take this thing instead of allowing this to shoot all the way down and mess up the the sort of smoothing. The algorithm smooths these areas out when you turn on dynamic preview or subdivisions. But keeping that in mind, you know, making it a little bit less work for it to go somewhere. So if it's going around this way and it wasn't quite doing well following down, you know, bringing it up like this most likely will help me to keep this area smoothed out a lot. So I always recommend just kind of focus on getting, keeping that stuff in mind as much as you can, get your shapes in there, but then always kind of go back and reevaluate too. There's nothing wrong with, you know, going back and tidying some things up and redirecting things and, you know, maybe adding some edge loops in places that you can. Like I would suggest like something like this where you have a nice clean ring, like this works really well, but I always try Another thing I recommend too is keeping, when you're building, try and keep your edges spaced out as much as possible for the broad surfaces. Only keep tight controlled edges around places where you need to, you know, to sort of main, like I'm adding edge loops here, specifically for these parts, but also to hold these edges. But like right here, I might want to add one in here, but if I do, if I go and dump one in, say right there, that's gonna, you see the flow is not quite connected. So this edge doesn't go straight to the middle, which I wouldn't want that. But most likely there's something in here that's like, I think, oh, there we go. That's what it is. I need to stitch this. Yeah, see, this is stuff you got to watch out for. Yeah, there we go. So now if I do that edge loop, it should go. Yep, so it's going to go around and down here. So this would be a big no-no. When I smooth it, all it's going to do is maintain this edge and mess up the nice, clean cylinder that I had flowing. So for things like that, Instead of uh, doing that, if I do need to add an edge here, I would suggest trying something like this, where I always try and redirect. Like, when in doubt, if you have to sacrifice a try, that's much better than screwing up a nice clean flow that looks good when it's nice and smooth. Especially when you're going to get into making maps and things like that, or if you have surface textures, that's going to polarize in weird ways. So you want to try and hide those things. But I could delete this to break that connection, and then insert an edge here, and then go in here and bridge this back whoops so there we go here and there and then let's go here and there so that's the manual process I could have split that poly but basically it creates a try but it doesn't do what it did before where it's shooting in and affecting that in the way that it did before shooting around this ring um, so I don't know I hopefully that's that gives you some kind of help but <laughs> I know the struggle. I, honestly, the only thing I can say is you really just have to get in there and, and experiment and find your own technique. And if you watch enough people do things, they end up doing a lot of the same stuff. Um, there's only so many ways to kind of shape and redirect. So eventually you kind of just figure out the, 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 the methodology of it. And let's see. this edge that's no wait I'll get rid of that yeah like I still gotta fix whatever is happening down here this try that I made originally I could probably fix that really easily if I just delete clean house a little so let's leave that one but delete this and this and this checking the direction first like breaking a connection just seeing where this edge is gonna go this is gonna shoot up this way if I smooth it out it doesn't go in a place that's not that's destructive really it's shooting outwards that might affect me later I would prefer to kind of do it like this is going around I'd like to keep going this way so this would be where let's see if I go delete this poly insert an inch here and then redirect it. So I'm stitching this so it's going to shoot this way. So this is going to break it and go off that way. So then I can maybe slide this now. Bridge this edge. And then now we can go bridge this back. So I'm reconnecting these things.
One thing you can do if you run into this where you just can't find something based on the direction, tell this to do nothing. Tell this to do nothing. And now you only get edge. Ah, symmetry's broken. Somewhere. What was I just working on the right side? So anytime I run into that, I just go back. I should be working on the proper size. I'm going to mirror this over and then mirror and well just to be sure. Yeah, so the proper side in this case, because I'm working in X, turn on the floor, should be facing Z, the left side, to use that mirror and weld quickly. But like doing things like this would help. Like I could just maybe go to the move brush and just kind of bring this a little bit closer so I can reconnect this, bridge this, and this. And you know what? I don't think I need this. This is actually a quad right there. So another tip would be trying to keep quads where you can so you don't get those convergences. What I just had there would be a considered an N-gon or not an N-gon but a five-point star, which has a really hard time with the smoothing algorithm, especially when you get into sculpting and things like that, where you get pinching. That's a usually a big no-no. All right, cool. So we'll leave it at that. Jeez, these seat model puzzles, you guys are watching me go through a hurting right now. I swear, uh, I'm not just saying this. I don't usually have this much trouble, to be honest. Like, for something this simple, I really made this incredibly complex for myself. But, hey, at least you get to see the pains. I think the pains are always sometimes a good thing to, uh, you get a realistic understanding of how to get through it. Because every once in a while, you do have those times, and, you know, everything's not always perfect, you know, and I, I, people hate topology, just building topology, and I used to, but I, I do kind of find sort of like this, it's kind of relaxing. It is like solving a puzzle, like, I forget who said that, but Xeno Shadow said that, yeah, it's like solving a puzzle, you know, it's like, it's like Fortnite, that's why I like Fortnite, is, uh, you know, I'm like building this thing like by hand, I mean, it, you know, you have these nice tools and they're, they're, they're very intuitive as far as like the construction process. But, you know, it's it gets a little hairy sometimes, like trying to figure out how to make the best thing work, you know. But anyways, I'm going to go till 4.30. I got about 10 minutes. Yeah, Squirt01. Squirt <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> yeah, that's modeling pretty much. Abel's got it, Squirt's got it, like, you learn the most from the pain, you know, you remember, you're like, okay, I'm not going to do this to myself again, right, um, you kind of have to just depart and take off and just go, which is what I should be doing right now, so what I wanted to get to is, alright, let's do something, let's get a little break away from this, so I'm going to go in, insert, real quick tip, like, I just want to block out some of these shapes, and, and I should have been doing this earlier, I got so caught up in all this, but what I want to do is, I just want to get the primary stuff in there, so I know, and then I can tweak and adjust later, so, quick tip using the, uh, I'm going to turn symmetry off, alt click on the center and so I'm putting the gizmo in the dead center, and I just want to use these primitives, but if you select one of these it's going to replace your mesh, so what I always do is, just take the gizmo, control shift D is the duplicate subtool, so you don't even have to look at it you can close the tray and then go in here, and then now I just want to do, I don't know, I'll start getting those shapes like a cylinder. And let's go, let's go, looks like it came in really small. So I'm going to go deformation, unify, and unify. So then this should, oh, let's try it on this. Go we'll grab a star, cylinder. Interesting. I don't know what's going on there. Let's go edit mode off, redraw it. Delete that. Delete that. Well, 
let's see. I can do it just so I don't mess around anymore. Let's go. I can easily do. So the same thing that I showed you guys earlier with the gizmo stuff, we ha we've had these tools, but the gizmo is just a little bit more intuitive and easily accessible, but we can do these cylinder 3D primitives and just reduce the vertical divide. Like I'll just bring it down to and reduce the horizontal so we get a nice low poly. See, it's a little octagon, so let's go to 8 and make poly mesh. So now I'll go back to here, insert this in. There we go. So now we got this guy. And make sure I've got this arranged in relationship to the bag. There we go. So I'm going to deform it. Just really quick, I anytime you run into the things where some things aren't drawing out properly, it could be a scale thing. So good tip is just unify your mesh and then you can do repeat to other which will unify everything into the default ZBrush scale value. So let's go. I like to, I mean, you can use the modeler for like doing the kind of stuff I'm doing to move things around, but I start getting into like, I only end up using insert edge, Q mesh, and just basic stuff. While I'm like some technical things you just have to get into, but I like to circumvent keep because it remembers your insert settings, it remembers your polygon settings and your verts. So I always keep it on slide, insert edge, and Q mesh with a single poly unless I'm in something. But then like things like those, I can use masking to grab something, alt click, and just, you know, readjust things without going in and changing my settings. It just gets a little, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So this is an easy way to make use of existing features in ZBrush without having to do too much menus and all that kind of stuff. So now let's go inset. Turn on my display properties. Group those separate. Q match and then like sometimes like I don't like to keep straight edges like that. So you can do little things like with the insert single, you can kind of put something in here and go in with Q mesh and just do a little poly loop stepping to kind of add a nice little bevel group by normals and then crease it in this case this is where group by normals would probably be really effective to do that quick assignment because I actually do want to keep that sort of you see it's got this sort of uh, it's keeping the faceted octagon edges so I want to keep that so I can go to group by normals reduce the angle down and then that's going to keep assigned basically a single group to each poly that's changing direction and then crease by poly groups so almost there and let's just do a little crease edge for all these there we go put this in the center um, a real quick tip like you can use the gizmo like it looks like the flat top is on the top so something like this so you can hold shift and rotate and it'll stop every five degrees but that's not quite enough I think I need to be at half of 45 so it's a little tricky um, but you can go into deformation and this thing is sitting along the z-axis so we can send this to the home and keep it perfectly at the center and then we can go into rotate and use Z and go uh, see it would be 22.5 there we go so that's going to give you a sort of a perfect little rotation and then now I can sort of readjust
and then let's break this off. So this is where QMesh is really awesome, where I can QMesh the this poly group, but then holding Control, I can bring this out, so I can make this its own piece. I'm going to bring this back in here. For now, I'll keep it as one contiguous mesh, but I might split this off later for the do lighting and rendering materials for like that light, for example. Oops. Make sure I got oh it is on. Q mesh polygroup all. Now let's see what we can do. If I go I can try something like I want to get that sort of bulb effect. Let's go insert multiple edge with interactive and let's really bulbous this out. Maybe just do a little sliding of these edge loops to kind of get this to taper a little better. Delete a couple of these. Then we could do a little go to deformation, maybe do a little spherize or maybe even better just a little polish or maybe a relax So many ways to do that. I didn't have to spend so much time on that, but you know. As I apparently like to do today, I'm just trying to make everything harder on myself. Might just do a little scale edge loop so I can actually inflate this. Slide it a little bit if I need to just get that. All right, so then what I'll do is let's grab this. See, we got something going here so far, so I'm going to bring this in just to start aligning things up. It looks like I'm running out of time here today. I actually got to get back to work. <laughs> so as much as I love it, I just want to keep doing this and play around all day, but I got stuff I got to do. So we gotta dump this in here. So then I've just put these two. So I'll grab this and this. Now I just wanna set it up and get it to scale to my scene. So I'm gonna turn symmetry off, alt click at the center of this mesh, and then turn on the transpose all. Now I can do control shift click, control shift click, and then with everything on, whoops, let's see. Sorry, did not mean to turn that on. I can even just turn this on right now and just bring this out so I can move those two together. Scale this up. Let's rotate it 180. Let's get this out here and then turn transpose off. So now shift click, I can turn everything on. 
now this is where once all the subtools are on if this is on I can clear it just grab these guys move this here place to line this up like maybe I have to match the contour of his body a little bit better all right not too shabby I'm liking where this is going I will say that maybe not the most successful day as far as efficiency goes but I had hoped to get much further and at least have that thing tapered out. But it's 4.30. Thanks, Bob with the Snack. I'm, I appreciate it um, very much. And one quick thing I did want to say to you guys before I go, because this is like, this is going to bother me as I mention it and I want to do it. Something like this. I got this piece here. Um, I wanted to do just a quick, uh, let's take a cylinder 3D. This is something that I think is very cool. We can take the, I'm just gonna take a cylinder really quick. I'm gonna try and replicate this piece. So let's go X size down to like 10, and then Z size down to 10. And 10 okay great now I'm going to reduce the horizontal divide quite a bit so it's nice and very basic but then crank up the vertical so I'm just adding edge loop spans across like a bunch of these guys all right we can maybe go up to like something a little bit smoother say 14 okay so let's just make this do a little quick save. So I'm just going to stretch this guy out quite a bit. And actually, you know what? Let's. It might even be quicker, to be honest. So let's go. You guys are probably already saying this in the chat. Like, why don't you just do a Z modeler? <laughs> so let's see. I'll just take this. I'm just going to stretch this baby up. Because Z model is actually Z model actually will be a lot better for this. Because what it's going to do is I want to start getting edge loops across to do some quick extrusions. So I can do go to edge, insert, multiple, and I want to do go back to specific so I don't do any elevation, and I can start to add these edge loop spans. Oh man, I made that thing really, really big. Maybe not that big. All right, so just a quick example. I would spend a little bit more time getting this to look right, but say I just want to go in Q mesh just that those edges in there so I got this thing so you could make this on an insert if you guys are familiar you know we have these insert brushes along a curve uh, you know doing things like a tube you know and drawing it across but if you want like full creative control to kind of adjust these things the curves um, going in different directions it's a little bit more time spent this might be I wanted to show you guys this because I don't see enough people out there demonstrating this and maybe it's just not known but let's go in and just I'm gonna insert that piece I made this guy so then let's go bring this over here scale that hose down so I'm just rotating this I'm keeping it locked at the at 90 degrees like along the X Y and Z axis so not at like 45 or anything like that for now so if I wanted to match, say, this, let's go quick save really quick before I move on. Scale this up a, just a little bit more. 
All right, so this is going into the start point. So now I'm going to go, let's move my image over, reset the gizmo, make sure it's right at the center, no symmetry on for this, and I'm going to go and do the bend curve. So this now I can actually choose uh, which axis I want, which looks like Z. Yeah, Z. Now I can add points along this. So I'm going to start off with just a few. And I can take the first one, start moving this over. Now you'll get a little bit of stretching and things like that, but then once you, s once you start to get the, the motion, so it looks like it's going like, and I'll say like this. And it looks like this one's going down. And this one needs to smooth out a little bit. And then when you want to, once you got the sort of general flow of where everything's going, we have, you have the option to squeeze, you have scale, we have twist for the points. And then if we go over here, this little blue cone, we have this smooth. So this will actually take that from a different angle, I'll use my mouse. You can see that it's going to average out that space between it. And then I can actually go in and just start to continue to move these things around, kind of give it a little bit more room. And we can actually go in now and add more points. So adding more points gives us another level of control variably. So I can add, you know, right now I have, you know, 10, 12 points. Let's see if I can see it. You can see over on the right. So I have three, four, each. It's not number of points, but you'll see like level four. Now we're getting a bunch more. So the more points in between, when you smooth, it's going to start to average out between them and actually make that stuff spaced out really well. But then if you need to go back and just do, like, it can obviously be a little... Harry going in and moving each individual point. So now I can actually go back down to a fewer amount and just make broad stroke adjustments to the overall thing. So that was what I wanted to show you. And it took me a while to, uh, <laughs> to get to that point, but um, hopefully you guys like that. And you know, this, like now I can go in and just do like one nice little one here, but then maybe bring this out and keep adjusting and then smooth as I go. So just imagine like I can do this for when we did the release of ZBrush 4.8. Originally, I did something like this in my stream where I was actually doing a backpack, but I was using this tool to reshape the straps around the back and do like twisting and things. You may not see it here, but if I click on a point, I can go in here and use this twist to turn it. But because it's a cylinder, you're not getting much of that effect. But you can do things like squeezing it, um, you know, scaling it up like, you know, maybe there's a ghost trapped in there or something like trapped in the tube and uh, smooth it out. So that was uh, where I wanted to take it and get to the Blade Runner gun, but unfortunately I just wasted a lot of time today. So I'm sorry, guys. I uh, All of you people out there, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, oh, sweet. I'm looking at the chat finally. So you, <laughs> finally, some excitement. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I'm glad you guys are excited about this because I, I'm still finding amazing uses for this and... It, it, it keeps going on and on like different ways and techniques just to do quick adjustments like you know if you get into you know really into it last final tip before I cut into somebody else's stream I'll quick save it if you do transpose master it's T pose take the gizmo put it at the center grab the bend curve now let's go in the Y space and then reduce this. So now you can actually do some just slight adjustments to your character, you know, stretching things around. So also thinking of it as not only just little quick adjustments, but maybe a posing tool, you know, use it as a way to sort of flex and bend your character. I can make him dance in here, you know, what up? <laughs> um, so anyways, that's uh, what I wanted to show you guys. And next time I'm going to probably try and wrap this up or at least get to a point of painting i, I want to get this down so i could do it within two to three streams max so the next time i think i might have a few extra things sort of finished um i might spend a little time finishing up this backpack since you all sort of saw the process and then the for the next stream my focus will be to actually make the blade runner style gun but for this one i'll be using live booleans uh, totally different technique and using booleans to make the subtractions and the additive parts to make a really clean awesome gun so that way you get a sort of wide range of tips 
So that's it. Thank you all for sticking around. I appreciate it very much. And the stream schedule, I'm not sure when I'm up next, but it will be probably in the next two to three weeks. So I'm trying to do two a month. So thanks for tuning in. Spread the word. ZBrush mashups. Oh, it, it, by the way, if you have uh, ideas for the stream, throw it in there now. Um, I'll leave the chat open for a little bit if you've got stuff, and I'm going to scrub through it and see if anybody had suggestions. But we left off with, uh, yeah, so we got White Power Rangers, Xenomorph, Pokemon, Oricom, Yoshi, Darth Vader versus Jar Jar Binks, which is a very risky mashup. I don't know if I'm willing to take that one on, uh, but, you know, it goes on and on. So any ideas you guys have, maybe next time in the stream, just throw them in there so I have a good selection to make the wheel. So... By the next one, when I'm done, I'd like to have the wheel done and actually spin it and start from there. So that'll be the official, I think, inaugural beginning of ZBrush Mashups. So until then, thank you, everybody. See you next time.